Hello friends, welcome to Science With Me. My name is Dr. Erica with Rosie Research and we have been doing a lot of fun Tinkercad circuit tutorials and now we are making them on breadboards in real life. So today's circuit tutorial is gonna be making some police lights. We're gonna have a red and a blue LED that will sort of alternatingly flash. And we are going to use something called a 555 timer for that. So this is what's called an integrated chip and it times things for us, which is great. Unfortunately, it does not come in the typical Elegoo kit. So if you want to make this project, you will have to get that separately, but you can usually get these on Amazon or eBay pretty cheaply. Um, and we'll talk about the chip when we get there, some fun things to note about that 5-5 timer. And we've got a capacitor right here. I've got a hundred microfarads and then I have some resistors. These are all one kilo ohm resistors. Um, but we might change that as we go because the capacitor and the resistors will change the amount of time between these guys flashing on and off. All right, so let's get started. Now the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to add our battery wires in. I have this nine volt battery here. It's got a battery hat and the other side are these two um, pieces and I can plug in these wires one into red the red one into the positive and the black one into the negative. And here on mine, it's blue. These might fall out as we are building and that's okay. You just wanna make note of it. And if you have a lot of trouble, we can tape it. Sometimes with kids in camps, I glue it there for them. And the other thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to connect the top and the bottom rails with um, a jumper. So that way we can have power and ground both on the top and on the bottom. And I can do that over here all the way on the right so it stays out of our way. So I will plug the red jumper in over here on the top and then on the bottom. You gotta make sure that you note though, here the, the hot wire that's high is closer to the breadboard and here it's further. It's sort of always on the bottom, but you just wanna make sure you note that. And we'll do the same with our ground rail. And we'll connect ground to ground there. And that will help us um, have a little bit more power and ground options. I'm just gonna switch this one real fast. That's also sort of small. All right, so the next thing that we're going to add in here is our 555 timer. Now your 555 timer, it's really important to put it in the right way. And you'll notice, you can kind of see this little circle that's shining here. And that's because it's a really smooth little piece on a matte black finish. And you'll notice in our picture on the left, there's also a white dot. That tells us where pin one is. And there are eight pins, they count one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, eight. All right, and I can actually put up an image of what the 555 timer looks like right here. So that's how it's counted. So if you don't know where pin one is, it's the one with the little circle. You can also figure it out from the groove, that little cutout groove. All right, now this 555 timer, if I connected it up here, I would be connecting pins one and eight, two and seven, three and six, four and five, and we don't wanna do that. We wanna keep these guys separate and be given the option. So that's why we put it over this big gap right here, because remember the top part of the breadboard is not connected to this bottom section of the breadboard. All right, so pin eight is our power, and so we are going to plug pin eight up here into power. And we can do that with one of our smaller jumper cables right here. Now we are going to plug our 555 also into ground, which is this one on the bottom. So we can take another jumper piece. That is gonna be pin one that goes into ground. If we look at that little diagram up there, it tells us G and D for ground. Oops, and we're gonna plug this guy right in. Now this gives our chip the ability to do what it's supposed to do which is some logic for us. So the other thing that we are going to connect to ground is pin four, and that is our reset button. And we don't necessarily need anything special to reset our 555 timer on this. We're just gonna keep going forever, basically. So let's plug this one into ground. You'll notice sometimes these guys get a little wobbly and can be a little tricky to put in. To get too bent out of shape, you can always just toss that little piece. There we go. All right, so there is pin four to ground. 
And now we can add in our LED. We can add in our red LED. I'm gonna put the long leg to the right hand side. And that's gonna be important for me to remember later because remember LEDs are those one way streets. And then I can add my blue LED in. And again, I'm going to put it the long leg to the right hand side. All right, and we might move these a little bit later depending on where we need our circuit components. But this is a pretty good start for us. And then next we are gonna connect the blue to ground. So I'm gonna take my blue one to ground, the short leg goes to ground, that one's on the left hand side. All right, so I can put that, it will go from the left hand side of the pin in the LED all the way up to that blue rail right there. And I can tilt this up if that helps you guys see it going into this pin on the left. And then I'm going to connect my red to high. All right, and you'll notice that we're sort of doing these opposite and so what's gonna happen is when blue is on, red will be forced off. So I want red to be high, which is its long leg, and orange, just like this. They have like a predetermined length they would like to be. You wanna get them in just right, especially with these types. And it makes your circuits look really, really nice. There we go. All right, so I have my long leg of my LED into hot right there. And now we're going to add one of our resistors. It's going to jump at this middle piece and it comes off the short leg of the red. So the leg that we did not connect to hot, the left hand leg, if you're putting them in the same way as me, just like that. And now we'll add our resistor in for blue and it's gonna go off the hot leg or the long leg, which is the right hand leg, because blue was connected to ground earlier. We can plug it in just like that. So this one's on the short leg and this one's on the long leg. So very subtle differences there. And now is the fun part where we are going to start connecting our 555 timer into our LEDs. So we are gonna connect pin three, which is the output of our 555 into the short leg, which goes to this resistor of our LED right there. The beautiful thing in Tinkercad is you can make the wires the exact length you need them in whatever color you would like them to be. All right, we are instantly on right there. I'm gonna take this out. Well, we'll make sure it doesn't touch right there. There we go. So we're on right now. I'm actually gonna unplug the battery so that we are not on as we build the rest of this circuit. All right, so now we are going to connect the red and the blue, which tells me that the output on this one is maybe high, the red will be on. If it's low, the blue will be on. They're gonna alternate between each other. So we're gonna connect these two resistors between red and blue together now. There we go. That helps us moderate, because remember this is going into blue's long leg, while this is going into blue's or red's short leg. So they're going into opposite legs, which is really important. All right, now we're gonna connect two of these pins in the 555 together. We're gonna connect the trigger, which is pin two, into pin six. And that just helps us, that's the threshold, and when we connect those together, I don't entirely know why. It's just something that we always we do very, very often with 555 timers. So I'm gonna find, I think this yellow one will be great for that. I'm gonna go from pin two into pin six. You'll notice I can go right over the top of that 555 timer. All right, so if you've got big ones like this, that's pretty easy, but if you have small ones, it's totally fine to go straight over the top of your 555. All right, so now we are going to add our capacitor in. You might have a capacitor that is not polarized. It's just sort of like a yellowish disc, and that's okay. That doesn't matter which way you put it in. This one is like an LED, it's polarized, so there's a minus sign here. And I have a short leg and a long leg. So when I put this in, I do need to make sure that I connect the ground into the right one, which would be the negative one. All right, so let's put this right in here just like that. And I think I'm going to cut my legs a little shorter 
so that you guys can see it better. And what I'll do is I will cut them even first and then we'll cut the short leg a little shorter, just in case. It's really nice though with these capacitors that they actually tell you, unlike the LEDs. All right, so I have the capacitor in and the legs actually are right next to each other and it looks like they are in pins nine and 10. All right, so those are the two pins that those legs are in right now. So now we're gonna work on connecting that capacitor to the 555, although I'm noticing that I actually connected pin two to pin five here across the 555, and I wanna connect it to pin six. So I'm gonna move this over one, make sure I get the threshold that I'm connecting that trigger to, and not the control. So I'm gonna plug my capacitor back in, and we wanna connect it from that trigger into our capacitor, which is just connecting pin six to the positive part of our capacitor, right like that. All right. <clears throat> and then we are gonna connect our capacitor into ground, and that would be pin 10 up into ground. So I can grab a gray wire here and connect it to ground and it was coming out of pin 10. So I can go from pin 10 up into that blue rail, which will soon be connected to ground with my battery. All right, now we are gonna add our third resistor in and we're just gonna put this across the jumper piece, sort of over by that 555 timer we have. We're gonna use this to go into that 555 timer. All right, and now we are going to add it in to our 555. And it goes in up top, the 555 also into the threshold. So we've got a lot going into that threshold. I'm gonna see what kind of wire I can do. So that threshold is pin seven. That one's a little bit too long. Let's go for orange, maybe. So I'm gonna go from pin seven, which is my threshold, into pin two, which is where that resistor is going. Just like that. And then we have another spot that's gonna go into the 555, and that's gonna go into pin three, which is our output. So I can probably use the orange again for this one. I just want to make sure I go to pin three and into that resistor. Yep, just like that. All right, and we should be all wired up. So what we're gonna do is we can attach our battery back in like this. So we already saw it lights up the LED. Now the time it takes to go from one to the other will depend on our capacitor and our resistors. So right now I see a whole lot of the red and I'm wondering how long it's gonna take to switch. We might want a smaller capacitor there. All right, so I tried changing out this chip and that didn't make it work, but I did notice that if I connect my resets too high, it does make it work. And I'm not sure why that's different or if I even take it out. I'm not sure why it's different between the Tinkercad and this, but if I take out that piece, this automatically starts blinking, which is pretty fabulous. And you can control this blink by changing this capacitor if you want to, or you can also change the resistances. But this is a sort of a fun way to make little police lights. If you pop this out, they both go on. And you can pop it back in and it will make them blink. Thank you guys so much for joining us with this circuit tutorial, and we hope that you had a lot of fun building this, and we will see you in our next one. Bye, friends.